Hi, my name is Dave. I'm a tour guide at the Titan Missile Museum down here in Sarita, Arizona. Uh, this is the crew's quarters. You can see the ceilings around. We're in that round three-story building. Uh, and it's built like that dome to deflect an overhead blast away from the crew center. Now, the Air Force gave us four hours each. We could come up here, we could take a nap, we could make something to eat, or we could just get away from the stress, the tension, and the noise of the control center for a little bit. Uh, this is our kitchen. Uh, the Air Force would pack us this big cooler full of food with dry ice, enough for four people for a 24-hour shift. Fresh eggs, uh, lunch meats, prepackaged food, and we'd bring it down on the elevator, we'd haul it up here, and we ate pretty good when we were down here. If you had somebody that could cook, then you were eating really good. But we were all kids. I was 19 years old, my commander was probably only about 24, so... We would stop at a Circle K for some reason. On the way to every missile silo, there happened to be a cir Circle K. We would stop and everybody would buy junk food. Uh, full of pots and pans in case we could cook. And our silverware, old 1960s era plates and cups and all that. So, you know, all the comforts of life. Now, it's the military, not the Taj Mahal. So there's nothing fancy up here. You could come up here two people at a time because there always had to be two people in that control center at all times, every minute of every day. So two people could come up here at a time, play cards, ashtray. We smoked down here. Uh, the only place you couldn't smoke, the only places you could smoke was up here or in the control center. Uh, you couldn't smoke out in the silo or anything. And during that 24-hour shift, people smoked. Now, these or what the springs are attached to. The springs that hold up these three, three stories of this building are attached to this part of the ceiling. You can see there's a big gap. We're not attached to the walls at all. So in case of a first strike, that shock wave, the building, the shell around us, and the ground around us can all move a foot and a half up and down and a foot side to side. And these three floors of this building should just hang here and not feel a thing. Now over here, there's just a little desk. A lot of the guys on the cruise would be going for their uh, college, uh, college diplomas, and you could sit there, get away from the noise downstairs. This was very noisy. You could do your homework. It was a very noisy place to be. The machinery down on level three of this complex was screaming loud. So wasn't until after I left in 1978 that they decided to put some carpeting in and uh, some material to try to knock down the noise levels a little bit. This is our bedroom. They call them hot bunks because we shared them. So two of us would come up here and have four hours to sleep while two people stayed down in that control center. Now, when I was here in the 70s, mid-70s, this was men only. This was a boys club. Uh, when, this was considered combat duty. We were a combat crew because the Soviets had a giant nuclear weapon aimed at this spot. Women were not allowed to work on combat crews. Until 1977, Congress woke up, changed their mind, and decided they would let women work on combat. Titan was the first project they picked to try that out. So in December of 1978, the first female missileers started working down here. So they added a separate bunk for the, for the women officers. And they put this screen in to separate us in case, for some reason, there was a man and a woman sleeping up here at the same time. All right, so you can see all the walls uh, soundproof to try to cut down on the noise. Uh, they put this ca fancy carpeting in after I left to cut down on the noise. In the years I was stationed down in the silo, I never slept. I just couldn't. Now, it was a 24-hour shift. You started your day at 6 in the morning at the secret bunker at Davis Montana Air Force Base. We would drive out to the silos, replace the crews that were there. They would take our truck. They go back to the base, and we're sealed in here for 24 hours. 
Well, the next morning, a new crew would come. You'd do a crew changeover. By the time you got back to the base, it was maybe 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So it turned out to be like a 32-hour day. I still couldn't sleep down here. Like I said, the machinery was loud. You were always on alert. It was always like a state of stress or a state of pressure. And if you look out here, these klaxons, anytime a secret message would come through, these klaxons would go off. So it was really hard to sleep down here. All right, so this was the uh, cruise quarters. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, we have plenty more videos coming online soon. Uh, so tune in.